Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Hit it, Frank. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Bra Motherfucking Topics. I'm your host, Kim Congdon, here with my co-host. Alex Scarlato. Hi. Hi. We're super excited today. I fucking love this guy. We we met and got close, actually, at Skankfest uh, this year, and he's become one of my good friends, and I'm excited to have him on. He's fucking hilarious. It's Josh Potter. What's up? Yeah, we decided it. The other day, did we meet at Skankfest? We're not sure. I, you said yeah. we met before. I think we definitely met before. Right, but, but I we think we hung, hung out. Yeah, at Skankfest. Yeah, we really hung out, which even even then, I wasn't really there. No, that's the thing I was going to say. I was, I was some celestial being of me was met, <laughs> but it wasn't necessarily me at the end of the day. Listen, whatever I did at Skankfest, I didn't do. <laughs> that's what I always say. Oh, I did it. <laughs> you claim it. Oh, I did it. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild because I met Josh at Skankfest too, and I was certain that you guys had known each other forever. Yeah, that's how it felt. That's yeah. why we're friends. Yeah, that's kind of the thing with comics too. I feel like you just kind of like all of a sudden you click it. Like Jessica Michelle Singleton, I met her at Skankfest too, and it's like oh, wow. we were best friends. You know what it? You know what it is? It's like meeting comics anywhere else where there are non comics feels like. Like when you go to detention and you make friends with the other detention kids, it's like we don't have to have anything in common, but we know we're all bad kids. Right. And also, that's the thing that brings us together. <clears throat> Skank Fest isn't like a, I mean, it's a festival, obviously, but it doesn't feel like one of these festivals that you go to and it's like everyone's nervous and like worried about like agents and shit like it's that, you music know? Music festival energy. Yes. Yes. It's like for a hang. It's the only festival that's an a it's the only comedy festival that's an actual festival and not some weird network audition. Right. Yeah, exactly. And everyone's like, oh, I hope I get this fucking sitcom or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. You know, Montreal is Everyone's like. Everyone's like, I hope I get fucked up tonight. Yeah. That's the only objective at Skankfest. <laughs> no one wants to do their sets. <laughs> no one. I've never seen a comic want to do their set at Skankfest. I have, it's not about the sets. Every year I've seen somebody uh, back out of something because they're too fucked up. Every year. <laughs> not these two over here and Sarah were all. No, Sarah was storming the stages like it was the Capitol building and she was a racist. It was crazy, dude. You'd be peacefully in the middle of your set and suddenly you'd hear like the door swing open and slam the wall. She truly came on stage during your biggest set at Skankfest. Yeah. It was wild. I had to kick her off. She ran up on the stage. She I came up on that. the stage and tried to share the stage with Kim. That but and then she was speaking gibberish. I had to kick her off. <laughs> I had to kick her off my, my own friend. I had to kick her off my stage. I was in a green room with her before she and we were both on acid. And I was just talking. I just was like, I couldn't be happier that I don't have to think about going on stage right now. I'm <sighs> so happy that I'm in this green room and I'm just hanging Chilling. out yeah exactly yes that's the best because it was i got a little nervous doing sets on acid doing it was that, that biggest set at skank fest peaking on acid pe crying i cried before <laughs> oh i went on stage my God. fully did, crying did you cry was, on stage no i stopped right before oh okay i was crying though we were truly it, it started out by laughing too hard and then it turned to real tears because you were nervous yeah it was wild yeah was it like it's so beautiful, that type of crying. No, or was no it like, I was like, I'm, I'm peeking. Die? What it, am I going to do? Was, I'm peeking. And we kept hearing the audience go fucking nuts for Bobby Kelly, who was on stage right before her. And killing. Just, he was killing. <laughs> Sober and killing. The idea of us being that high and we were looking at each other going, you have to follow that was just so funny to us. We couldn't believe it was true. Like, and Bobby <laughs> Kelly was like, he's not. I, don't, I think he's sober. I'm not sure. Yes. Yeah. He yeah. yeah, he's sober. So he's like, just on it he, right. like there's comedian, set, everybody else is set. fucked up yeah. and he's like doing combo to the point where i'm like i haven't even heard comedy like that's crazy you're, you're like, <laughs> i forgot what comedy is it's nuts <laughs> i i was definitely like peeking when sarah went and got her tattoo and it was like in that like airplane hanger part of the so was she <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but like i all i could hear i didn't even know where we were someone like guided us back into that part and i mean i didn't like have a full sense of where i was in the building and all i could hear in the background was robert kelly talking 
Yeah. And I'm like, is Robert Kelly just following me like through this whole trip <laughs> of acid? He was in every room I was in. I felt like the first gang fest I went to, I got so high that I tried to find the quietest room I could. And I walk into this quiet ass room and Zach Amico was in there. And when I walked in, he looked freaked out. And I looked at him, he goes, too high? And I went, yeah. And he goes, come here. And then I passed out on him. And when I woke up, he was gone. <laughs> and I woke up, like, must have been an hour later, like, really needed the nap. Mm -hmm. And when I woke up, it was just Gilbert Godfrey in the room. Whoa. And I was like, and he was like, hey. And I was like, <laughs> Is huh. anyone gonna use these magazines? Yeah. <laughs> he He's just like, how takes you doing? All the stuff I was in the like, room. uh, I'm good. I'm gonna go because I feel like you saw me drooling. That, no, that was the awkward skank fest, dude. That was also the same skank fest where you kept running into Louis C.K. while you were high off your ass and couldn't think of anything to say besides, hey, Louis. Big fan. <laughs> <laughs> I am. She, ran, she went into she ran into him twice and said the same thing both times. And she goes on the third time. She goes, well, it's almost the rule of thirds. I should try to find him and say it again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, comedy rules, not mine. Every time you see him now, big fan. You got to say it, even if you're like at dinner with him. What else can you say to Louis? I don't know. It's I, awkward. I think you wanted to tell him that you were a comic, but it didn't come out. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was you too know much. you didn't want to tell him that? No, I, I didn't know what to say. Like, I wanted to tell him. I didn't know. I didn't. You I wanted don't have to a, talk to him. But I just wanted to talk to him. Nothing to say to him. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Truly nothing. Which is always the issue when you meet, like, a celebrity. You're like, what? The first interaction, if it doesn't go well, you'll hate the fact that you ever met them to begin with. There's oh very, God, there's yes. very few celebrities that I know that I'm like, I know what I'd say. Like Drake. If I talk to Drake, we're going to have to fix that song. Oh, you know what you want to say to there's Drake. There's this Drake you song. This? You have a Hold bone on. to pick with Drake. Kim is going to give Drake a correction in one of his songs. Isn't that <laughs> what insane? What song is that? There's a song called Mob Ties that he does. And he does this thing where he's in a flow. He's like, da 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 it's it would same, be so same, much better yeah, like it's if same. it went like this. Da 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 And it would just, it would change the whole song. And I hate to say this, but she's right. He really missed an opportunity to drop the mic on that last syllable. Yes. And it's just, it would just change that moment. And it. I think it would have, I think it would have really butterfly affected his future. I would have loved to see Drake just go. Okay. I'm like, there's no way of knowing whether that will totally blow your shot with him there's Kim. a 98% chance that will blow my shot but there's if, a 2% chance that he will be so impressed that a woman spoke to him like that there is a 0.5% chance that he'll be like genius and change that's the song right, yeah <laughs> or he's like I need her to help me write the next song you go, what do you think about this song and then he's you're giving him tips about a different one Not that's true Drake getting funnier because you're his partner oh uh, listen if you start hearing roast jokes and his raps <laughs> just know someone you know over here is pussy he's in <laughs> hey. have you ever had a there's a little Puerto Rican ghost writer on the scene. <laughs> Have you ever had like an audience member come up to you after a show and goes, that uh, that whole thing you do about that, what if you did this? And you're like, you have to be like, oh, all right. You know, like, what do you say to that person as a reaction? Yeah. You know what I mean? It makes yeah. it awkward. What am I supposed to be like? This is why you sit in the crowd and watch. I like to accept it, but passive aggressively. I go, oh, cool. I'll think about that. I just go, ha -ha, like one of those. Yeah. Know? I think of a person as the balls to say that to you to begin with. If they're going to take your, I'll think about that, that not passive aggressive. Right. No, they'll take that they're as, stupid. oh, look, I helped her out. Yeah. Whatever. I had a girl come up to me after a show once, like this 23 year old girl at a Soho house show, <laughs> a little blonde girl come up to me. She goes, I really, in front of all the comics, she goes, I really liked your set. It's just like, I really wish you didn't, weren't so dirty. Ew. And I went, I really wish you would get the fuck out of my face. And she was like, <laughs> she was like, wow. And I was like, you're an idiot. Don't speak to me. And I just turned around. And she was like stunned. But yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. How does that even. It's almost exactly what I just did back to you. Except mine was prompted. How do you even like as an audience member go like, 
I'm going to tell this person that I just paid to see how to do their job. What's the craziest thing a fan's ever done for, to you? Like, what's craziest? like something uncomfortable? Like, oh, I, I had a, um, it's not like when it's a guy and a girl dynamic, like stalkers are different towards us. Like I was saying this, like, uh, about a different stalker incident that just occurred to a, a friend of ours. I was like, if the, if a woman came up to me and did that, I'd probably regretfully fuck her. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> if, and That's then, hilarious. Like, Men just accidentally fuck their stalkers. Yeah. Yeah, because you're just like, well, this girl really likes me. They get and then- into a <laughs> minimum two month relationship before realizing that she's crazy, and then she's an issue all the way down the line. All the but way. Like, uh, I had a woman DMing me quite a bit, and I thought, oh, this is cool. She's cute or whatever. And the DMs started getting like to the point where they're robbing me of my time. Do you know what I'm saying? Like they're getting, they're starting to get really insane. Do we know what oh, you're saying? Oh, of course. Yeah, I know. I mean, like, what am I talking about? <laughs> but like, uh, <laughs> so I started getting uncomfortable with it. And then she started like DMing me that like I was giving her messages through my podcast. She's like, I know you were talking to me through my podcast. I was like, I don't even think about you. The first letter you know of I mean? every word that you said <laughs> spelled, spelled yeah, out murder. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> murder. And you know who was murdered? My aunt who was in love with a husband. So you're in love with me. And I just straight up told her, I'm like, this makes me very uncomfortable. I can't uh, like encourage our interaction anymore and stuff like that. And I just kind of like blocked her or whatever. But like the thing that I feel safe with is if I ever saw this woman and most probably women I know that if they like attacked me or something, I could just kill them. But you guys don't have that luxury sometimes when they're these big fucking dudes or whatever, I'd imagine. You're taking like jujitsu and shit. So, yeah, I mean, I this is what I always say about jujitsu. I can it'll you could definitely still rape me. It'll just take a lot longer. <laughs> you'll, get, you'll, you'll get a couple more scratches. Y- yeah, you'll get a lot more scratches and you're not going to finish, dog. <laughs> you're going like, to be a lot more yeah. tired when you finally get to fuck me. Yeah, yeah. dude, it's going to be the fight of your life. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Um, uh, That's yeah, so it's weird. It's weird. And it's so funny that this girl is like, you were sending me messages and I thought that you wanted to be, be together. And you were like, I've never thought of you in my life. Cause dudes in my life will literally send me messages, text messages and be like, I want to be with you. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, I never said that in my life. And I'm like, no, you literally <laughs> sent that message to me. You said that out of your mouth to my mouth. They're like, I think you're just hearing things. Yeah, And crazy. I'm like, I'll show it to you. And they're like, no, that's not a text. That's not what I meant. They're like, that's, <laughs> that's not, not me. A, I'm that's like, that's you. Text. No, that's an I message technically. <laughs> That doesn't count. I like on TikTok where the I always bring up TikTok trends because they crack me up. But the trend of like when a girl catches a guy cheating, she's like, oh, wow, really? So you fucked my neighbor and then you bought her Sprite. And then the guy will be like, it was a Coke. (laughs) (laughs) And it's like exactly how I feel like that goes. It's so funny. funny. Um, Yeah. Fans are crazy sometimes. Yeah, that's the. I mean, like I've had guy fans be weird, too, but like. They're more just like socially awkward, I feel like, as opposed to wanting to like wear my skin as a suit. But um, yeah, that that woman was crazy. I have a weird thing. Well, we both do have a weird thing where the same guys that will post really mean things about us on Reddit will also come up to us and tell us that they worship us. It's really frustrating. Which is really bizarre. It's really frustrating, dude. Cause I'm like, well, then how just do you be really nice. Feel what's happening. Yeah. Are you do they sure? think they're negging you? Yes. Is yeah. that what it is? I Maybe. fully believe that they're either. I don't. I don't even think that they're negging. <laughs> actually, when I think about it, I think there's an ego to their online persona where they want their profile to seem cool. They it's want the crazy. other dudes to be impressed with how much they yeah. hate women, even though none of them really want to be mean. I have to like check myself. In the comments sometimes, like when I have like, like say I have you on or Sarah on my podcast or something. And then in the comments, it's like something heinous is written. I have to be like, okay, this guy just doesn't. He thinks he's like in right the joke. It doesn't mean exactly what it means, but it's like, man, I want to fucking flame those people sometimes. You know, it's I mean? hard not to. The other, yeah. the other day I had a guy on Instagram. I posted that the bikini picture where I obviously photoshopped my waist like paper thin mm. It was like a bit. Yeah. And then some but guy it's commented. Like, it's like, truly, you look like a monster in this. It's like, it's 
purposefully not the right uh, dimension. It's a yeah. fun house so, mirror. It's yeah, like, exactly. it's, a, it's like a fun yeah. house mirror. Yeah. And then this guy comments on it and he's like, ew, you can still see that she's actually fat with the throw up emoji. And I was like, I click on his page and his last picture is him and a woman and and she's bigger than me. Yeah. And he's like, love of my life. I don't know what I'd do without her. So I just clicked on it yeah. and I oh sent it God. to her. He's, yeah, she screenshotted the comment, sent it to his wife and said, your husband is bullying girls online. How do you I said, feel I said oh are you proud God. that your husband bullies what women? What did she say? She never wrote back. <laughs> no, but she, she talked to him about it, I'm sure. Yeah, also, you're you're probably very clearly hotter than her, and she's like, oh, my God. If he thinks that about her. Yeah, like, right. Well, that was my point. It's like, you should leave this man. I like how you were like, I'm going to take this relationship down with me. Wreck Funny. his marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love I've that. De- I've had a guy, like, <laughs> say horrible things to me, and I've just DM'd his grandmother. That's, that's, that's a little, I mean, like. I don't care. You deserve no, no, that. No, no, that's fine. No, that's good. I'm saying. The one to the wife is crazier to me. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because your grandmother loves you unconditionally. Your wife, not so much. No, yeah, you shouldn't have a wife. You don't deserve a wife if you're talking to women like that. I, I actually don't think you need a wife. Maybe you should spend a few years alone and, and learn why you don't like women, why you need to hate strain women you don't know on the internet. I never understand these, like, mongoloid guys on... Is that a, 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 a bad word to say? But these fucking... Can, is Mongoloid bad? I said I the know. R word two episodes ago. Is Mongoloid oh. like <laughs> the right. R word? It is, I guess, but I don't care. Um, okay. I think it's softer, even though it sh- seems like a stronger word. Is but, that what they call? <clears throat> these guys are like Lanny of Mice and Men. They're all like, ooh. And then they, <laughs> yeah. like, they fucking comment like things calling uh, the women ugly that they would murder per- people to sleep with. Dude, they would fucking... They would fucking rub their balls in fiberglass to even get near us. They would come before they even penetrated you. It's crazy. And they're like, gross. It's like, what What kind of person? It's just sad people on the you internet. There's so many. makes me really sad. I get a lot of mean comments where I click the profile and it's a family man. It's a person with three to five kids and a wife in the profile picture. I'm like, oh, this is yeah. too much, dude. What kind of double life are you leading that you need yeah. to be mean to girls on the internet with your three daughters in your profile. Yeah, any guy who's like, dad, if they're writing like mean shit in the comments section, it's weird. That's like you should, CPS should come over and assess whether or not something's you should not right with children. you. Yeah, exactly. Something's not right. You're bullying people on the internet and you're a dad. It's wild. Yeah. That's so crazy. It's so weird. It's so crazy. And like, I, I've had like a, a couple weeks ago, I tweeted that I was doing a show somewhere. Come out to the show, blah, blah, blah. This time, this time, this club. This dude tweets me back and says, don't tweet anything else till you make an OnlyFans or something oh like that. Oh my God, I'm good at Whereas this. OnlyFans are nothing or something like that. Right. And I click on his profile and he has his two daughters in his hand. Like three and seven. And he's like, why aren't you doing pornography? Yeah, and I just retweeted it. I just retweeted it and said, I have to look your daughters in the eyes when you tweet these things. <laughs> like, and then he changed his profile picture. But I'm like, so what? So could keep <laughs> tweeting those things? Yes. Oh, that's a good point. I do want to keep telling girls to make OnlyFans, so I better change <laughs> he my profile He took a lesson picture. the wrong way. See, he like, thought he I was g- giving him social media advice. He, he could have co- gone about that one in a completely different way. A little, you know sugar instead of salt he could have been like you know if you made an only fans i would gladly pay a you. king's ransom yeah exactly something a little more i don't even mind someone replying to that and saying i'm dying i'm waiting for the only fans yeah if only you had an only fan yes. something like that but like but the- not like a shut up broad where's the naked pics yeah, it's yeah. like okay Unless you got an OnlyFans, then you have quiet. no value to me. It's, so yeah. Yeah. it's literally saying stop with your comedy and go be a porn star. It's really mean. I'm not. I like. I'm not even good at sex. <laughs> 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 I've said it before. I don't do much. Like I'm just like don't do much. Dude, isn't that a thing? How you're like? <coughs> I feel like I could be great if only I had the ambition to try. Well, I don't I'm, care. I'm about sure it. you guys haven't uh, been on very many OnlyFans accounts, looking around and stuff like that. But that. That is some of the fun of the like girl you know as a bartender that's an OnlyFans, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, like the girls you know from real life. Some of them are really bad at it. At you fucking. know what I mean? Like, yeah, they'll be like, yeah, they'll do like a video where it's like uh, them fucking like their boyfriend or whatever, and you're watching. And you're like, this 
totally tore down every illusion that I ever had of this woman. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's how people are when they fuck me. I'm online and I'm like, I'm, I'm a like thick, physically I'm fucking. A, I'm online. Is, I'm like, I'm a thicky queen, Puerto Rican, thick tight. I want to get figgity fucked. I want to get figgity <laughs> fucked in this elf outfit. I've got gorilla grip. And then when people come over, I'm like, owie. <laughs> Ow. But even like, I'm just saying in terms of their like, it's not that they're acting or anything like that, but it's like, you could tell when they're on camera, they're not exactly comfortable. I was just going to say that. I think that the camera plays a massive role sure. in it. It's like, a lot of the people who are making the decision to fuck on camera haven't been on camera a lot in their lives before. And right. it definitely influences your performance in that setting, probably more than in any other setting. Like as when I was new to podcasting, I feel like it took me a full year to forget that a camera was around. Like I, if I was fucking, it would take me 10 years to be a good porn star. I'd be ugly by the time I'm ready for it. <laughs> you'd be done and out of there. You'd yeah. be in yeah. MILF you porn. Your, by the time you got your 10,000 hours, yeah, you're doing MILF yeah. porn. <laughs> uh, she'd only be 30, but she'd be doing <laughs> MILF porn. <laughs> oh, man. Even man. just like a picture or something, like a girl's like, send, send me a pic or whatever. I feel like I'm like, oh, my God, I don't have like hair and makeup over here for my dick. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I can't just we're not ready for that. I get so upset thinking like I don't get upset, but there is something so difficult about working so fucking hard. Like, you know, we're like in this industry, we're working hard. We're mm -hmm. like really fucking and people like, you know, it's uh, it's the same thing for Alex, even though you're not a comedian. We're all like working very hard to make and we're all in this sort of place right now. We're in we're in this like. Uh, purgatory in between success <laughs> and it's sick. And we're in this weird level to where I, I, this is how I described it to my therapist that I was working a regular minimum wage nine to five. And once I wor hustled hard enough to stop, then I started making minimum wage in comedy. Like you go back <laughs> down to the bottom, mm -hmm. right? When you make a lot of money at my, my wrist, my, uh, production company job as an executive assistant. And then I go, Ooh, I can quit and do stand up. Then I make, and then it gets cut into nut. I'm back in a sharing a living room with three people mm -hmm. because I want to do this thing now. That's it's the scariest sick. part about it. It's like, I said that some of the other day, I'm like, I'm like doing better than I did when I had a real job, but, I go, I don't want to go backwards. Ugh. Like, that's my, like, I get chills. You know what I mean? Dude, I said that's my therapist the I one time. Quine, I, I say those exact words. And she's like, well, you know, things are, things will change. You just got to hope they change for the better. I go, well, that's not a helpful <laughs> thing to say. Are you arguing you're, with your therapist? I do. I go, you're not, that wasn't a good, I know that. I was like, that's my point. I you know talk things, back to your therapist? I do all the time. Yeah. I mean, how I long have you just, been going? Uh, two months. Okay. I just kind of say things where I'm like, well, yeah, that's what I said. I understand that I'm like struggling with it. Yeah. I yeah. go, I go, that doesn't mean I'm going to react properly. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You're just repeating what I just said. I go, well, I know I should be doing, I should think of it this way or that X, Y, Z. Is this your first therapist? Yeah. Okay. I just found my sixth. <laughs> I know people change them all the time and I'm like, well, you gotta, I feel like you have to go a while, right? To like, no. No. Okay. No, I don't know. No, I couldn't have. If well, I know you, you really decidedly hated every one of your therapists. On the, she never went back to the same one twice until this one. Oh, I see. This one's the one. This one I'll marry. Oh, that's a problem. If he's yeah. watching, I'm kidding. <laughs> he it watches. Is, weird, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> is a joke. Uh, he did say he watches. <laughs> when I got my, I, I picked. You know, I want to have a woman there. I feel like I can just talk to a a woman better. That's what and, I thought. Um, that so, was my mistake. I but then I got it. I go, she's not hot enough for me to want to <gasps> do this. Is what I thought in my brain. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I go, I want a hotter you one. You should have told her about that. That would have hurt her feelings. Oh my God. I, if she ever says but anything it is out of pocket, I will know. bring up. <laughs> not you no. hurting her. Not you hurting your therapist on purpose. Oh no. I did. That's why it took me so long to get into therapy. Because I was always like thinking of it as a thing I could win. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, we've talked about that before. How like we think that a lot of people who are really smart have the tendency of going into therapy just to, to make sure they're right. Yeah, to uh to confirm to justify their beliefs or validate already. themselves. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't have that. I mean, there's things I want to work on about myself, 
And I and I know it takes like a long the way she's like, well, you know, it's not overnight kind of thing. And I'm like, I get that. I'm ready to do all the steps or whatever. And so I'm doing the things and some and some of it helps a great deal. But like every now and then <coughs> I'm like, did you just listen to me at all? I just said those words. You know what I mean? Like I'm saying that I understand. Listen, that. I I'm seeing red flags with your therapist. I know you're going to say dumper. <laughs> I'm, I want to tell you to dump your therapist, but I don't know anything. What's the red? What other red flags? My red flag. Or what is the red flag? Really? Listen, the only thing I know is I've had. Do you guys had, talk about I've this on the f- podcast? I'm sorry. <laughs> if you talk too much about therapy or if I'm talking. No, 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 no. We don't really talk about therapy ever. Um, but I've had four therapists before him. I've dumped them all after the first or second session. I think I made it to two with two of them. Have you ever tried a woman? Yes, I had all women before. I had oh. one, the second one was a man that I saw once, but it was he wasn't odd enough. He wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same problem. Same problem. We have yeah. the same problems. Um, but this therapist, the reason I like this therapist, all the other therapists, I felt like I was doing that thing. I'd go in and they'd say things that I already you knew. You felt like you were outsmarting them because like they weren't giving you enough. This therapist yeah. is the first one that outsmarts me where I hide things from him and he calls me out. And in my head I go, I didn't tell him that. And then he looks at me like, and then I just see his degree behind him and I'm like, yes, that's what I want. I want someone who fucking pulls it out of me. Yeah, that's interesting. And no, and the other people have just said things and they've been like, that is horrible. And it's like, that's not what I want. I don't withhold things because I feel like I'm, I do, I'm the same. I, my job is I talk on a podcast and I, I don't hold anything back there. So why wouldn't I bring it up to this? woman you know what i mean person you're paying well sometimes you don't even know you're holding it back that's the thing he says things to me that i'm like uh, and then i like literally he stops me in my tracks a few times and we've only seen each other three or four times and he and you're falling in love with him (laughs) no (laughs) i'm not no i just want to fuck him (laughs) (laughs) no i'm not no i'm not i'm really not but it is it is very very interesting that like I have such a big problem with men. Mm. Um, and the well, only you feel seen by this man. He's yeah. yeah, he and the only therapist I do like is a man. But it's interesting also that like uh, but I don't like my mom either. I mean I like her, but you know. But fight. there's there's definitely <laughs> yeah. a thing where there where he's seems to be one of like the first dudes to be like nah I'm getting to know you even though he's being paid for it it probably feels good for him to be getting to know you so quickly and so carefully you know what I mean you have never dated a guy that's just like asks you about yourself or anything like that they're all meatballs that just want to like I've only had (laughs) I've only had three boyfriends oh okay like I've dated people that have asked me about myself, but I I don't consider anything that's like. Er, but early on, when you're asking, when you don't know each other that well, and somebody asks you about it's yourself, just you're not going to go into the same types of deep conversations oh, that you have no, when you you're go into, with friends or when right. you're with the therapist. Well, I will if I had tequila. <laughs> if I had tequila, you're knowing it all. <laughs> yeah, but you're doing like PR sort of uh, yes. move here when we're do, you know you want yeah. your publicist at the dates when to... you're when you're on your first date, you feel like you're a Kardashian and Christian watching over your shoulder. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I better not tell them what happened in 09 at the spring bake bikini contest. Yeah. You'll save that for later. That, that's like, a, oftentimes I've been told, I'm like, their girls are like, you're quieter than I thought you were going to be. Obviously they think because I'm on a podcast or I'm in, you know, in comedy that I'm not, qui- I, you know, out there like goofing or maybe I'm a goof off or something. I don't mm-hmm. know. But then I'm like quiet and I just chill and they're like disappointed by that or something. But it's all, it's really just because I'm like, I don't, we're going to let crazy spill out slowly here you know what i mean anytime a guy's ever said you're like you're really quiet it's always been because i don't like them anytime (laughs) i don't like someone i get so quiet that's the other thing too yeah if you notice the conversation is like lacking in some sort of connection you're like all right i'm just gonna stop putting effort into it then now i feel like i'm interviewing you you know yeah but also i feel like kim you go into things uh, you're really cautious about telling dudes that you're dating that you're a comic because like I think that for anybody once somebody finds out that you're an entertainer they just immediately naturally expect you to entertain them and it puts a lot of pressure on the date yeah for that's lucky for you that you don't have them knowing that going in that's why I try not to but some of them do I 
it's yeah. the only time a woman wants to date me. <laughs> yeah. It's because they know that. Yeah, uh, it's different for a guy. Really yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I did not think of that. Me out of context is they're like, is this guy? You know, just, should we take him back to the home <laughs> or what? You know what I mean? Like, it's not like I've never. You go up to hit on a girl and she goes ah and yeah, runs exactly. away. Like, who is? Did someone? Can someone get their thing here? And oh take my it back? god! No, you're I've an idiot. never dated a woman out of context before. Oh, man. Which wow. is weird. I never thought of that. And it's probably like that for a lot of male comedians. I remember when I first started comedy, I would use it as like a pool. Like I thought it was attractive. And now I'm like fully embarrassed of it. <laughs> I like need it to like there's gr- there's <laughs> I women. I won't nut without it. <laughs> no, it's not even that. It's like there are women who have like who if I saw them at a bar and I approach them. The, the the look of like how, what made you think you could talk to me would yeah. come across their face but if I perform and then I talk to them it's completely different it is it is but for I feel like for women sometimes you feel like it is reductive yeah I think I think that a lot of times when I I when a guy finds out I do stand up it either becomes the entertaining thing you said, but most of the time it becomes this like competitive feeling. That's weird. Like, th- like he thinks he's funnier than you. Yes. Suddenly. It's like, if she can do it, then I can do it. And it's like, you certainly can't do it. And then they get <laughs> yeah. like, and then they get weird about the fact that I'm like, no, you can't. It's like very hard actually. Not everyone can do it. Mm-hmm. And they don't like that. It's weird. I feel like it's weird for a guy to not want a girl that he's dating to be better than him at just anything. I, just I think that's thing. weird too. It's crazy. Everybody has their thing. Any two people, there's somebody who's better at one thing and somebody who's better at another. And if just go find your own thing yeah, to be good at, if you're dating somebody who's like, I don't like that you're better than me at that. It's a fucking problem. Dude. Oh my God. I, f- I, I never understand the people who don't, they're like, if like my, girlfriend or wife was making more money than me or was successful i'm like attracted to success you know what i mean like if a girl's just got she's aimless like i my one girlfriend was like she was still in college and i was you know slightly out of college but like she had no goals it was like what are you gonna do she's like i don't know and she was like a babysitter and i was like well, you know, I, if you're thinking you're just going to latch on to this fucking boat, then you're sorely mistaken. You got to at least upgrade to nanny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> Stop calling yourself a babysitter and call yourself a nanny. It's yeah. embarrassing. <laughs> Have you seen the movie The Babysitters? No, no. Oh. The Babysitters Club. I've seen <laughs> much different movie. This is a. Mo- Let me tell you, yeah. <laughs> this was a club. <laughs> it's all these high school babysitters that start forming a prostitution ring where they're fucking the dads. And it becomes a huge business. Sounds like a great business, yeah. Yeah, and then they're like these high school girls that are like, um, like what's the female version of a pimp, a mistress? Oh, uh, uh, a madam, uh, ma- madam, madam, mm-hmm. a madam. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Wait, isn't it a madam, madam? It's, it's madam, <laughs> isn't it, madam? Well, that's like if I, I was if addressing French you, like or something. I would be like, "Hello, madame." madame. I would do that, uh, but like <laughs> the role of female <laughs> pimp is madam. <laughs> All right, well, fuck you guys, dude. Uh, cut so. that out. It's the only thing we cut out of the podcast <laughs> yeah. is me being embarrassed about being an idiot. <laughs> the that's madame, the madame, the madam. <laughs> yes, madam. That's like when I say Galapagos. Galapagos, yeah. No, I I can't say. Um, Proquivalent, proquivities, or pro- I've never even heard that word. Oh, okay, proquivit, like pro- sexual, pro- pro- like proclivity. Like, yes, can't proclivity. Say it. Is that is that how you say? It? Did I you think say that? So. Proclivity. I'm not even sure. I'm a little high. Proclivity. I say it and I go. Ugh, I what does it mean? Like a uh, sort of a propensity to be a certain way. Mm. Okay. Like I, it's one of you know, it's like. Uh, this guy likes young girls or something like that. You know what I mean? He has a proclivity for young girls. <laughs> that's, yeah. a, that's a polite way a to yearning. say a, a yearning a, uh, problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He has a thing for it. It's like yeah. saying a, a thing. A, yeah. yeah. A thing with a thing. Right. Yeah. He's got a thing for a uh, proclivity for urine or something like that. You Just know say I mean? a thing and stop being a douche. That's no, what I yeah. say. All right. Not no, to you personally. No, yeah. <laughs> I just start being mean. Like, Get out. All right. Uh, I say j- he's got a thing for young girls. Yeah, no, sure. Or, you know, blondes or whatever. You could have, we could have said anything there. Anything. 
We chose, I chose young girls, sorry. You were like the proclivity of the s- centrifugy <laughs> of the Galacablos. <laughs> and it's like, what are you trying to say? You're like, I want to go out to lunch. It's like, okay. My father can't say Massachusetts. Really? He says Massachusetts. Massachusetts. He's the English isn't his first language, but what Massachusetts is, isn't an English word. It's what's like his first state. language? Uh, Greek. Oh, okay. Oh, dude, I had a friend's mom growing up who couldn't say she was from Israel and she couldn't say hippo, hippopotamus. She used to say hippopotamus. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's great. My mom used to confuse chicken and kitchen. That's cute. So she was like, um, she was like, make sure you put the kitchen in the freezer. <laughs> mm-hmm. you didn't even clean the chicken i love like foreign parent stuff where it's like my dad will say like close the lights you know what i mean mm-hmm. Instead of turn close up. the lights yes um i have had a i've been sharing a joint with a very very mexican girl one time and when she was done she was like can you turn it off can you turn it off i was like that's so cute it is adorable can you turn it off that's cute i, like it. <laughs> I was like turn it off what well, you're Puerto Rican. Have you dated many races? Yes. Well, okay. I've only had three boyfriends, but I've dated everyone. Everyone. <laughs> no, not everyone. No. I've, I've never, I would, but the races that I haven't dated, it's not because I'm not into it. I'm like, there's well, what no about race. Hookups? I have never hooked up with an Asian dude, but I think Asian guys are hot. Okay. I just, a lot of the times when I meet a hot Asian guy, he has a really hot Asian girlfriend. Fair. And that's just that. I feel like a lot of Asian dudes are dating Latina chicks. I don't or ever maybe feel Maybe that's like out here. That. Maybe it's just LA. I feel like in New York, you see a lot of white dudes dating Asian chicks. That'll happen. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of uh, that's everywhere. fetishizing of the Asian community and the white community. Yeah. What about you as a white lady? How many uh, races? Uh, I was in a relationship with an Indian dude for like 10 years. Wow. And then, uh, and like I've hooked up with a couple black guys, but never dated one long term. Um, and now I'm in a relationship with a white dude. Hmm. No whites for you, eh? Yeah. My first boy, the first guy, my first boyfriend was a white guy. I would like to try all the colors of the rainbow at some point, but I've only, I've only... I slept with an Asian woman, slept with a black woman, and dated white women. Isn't it so funny? That, I got like, no, a Latina woman, too, now that I've lived here. I keep forget. Well, here I forget that I think that they're white because they're per, uh, complexion. But then they're like, no, I'm. But then they hit you. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> no, I'm Mexican or whatever. Yeah. You know? yeah. You'll find out quick. <laughs> yeah. No, you find out. You hear it. Upset. You hear it on the sp- about the second date. <laughs> they get uh, upset. Yeah. <laughs> Nay. Um yeah, isn't it it's so crazy. I yeah, I've never hooked up with an Asian guy. I've never hooked up with an Indian guy. I've never hooked up with an Asian guy either. What about Unless Middle you Eastern. Count Indian. No. No. Hmm. No. <laughs> I did a lot of my fucking in uh college and mm-hmm. it was a very white town, so that's that. That's that. Um, and uh, it was a white or black town. So it was like one of those two. No in between. Those were the choices, really. Yeah. Those were the choices. Yeah. It was like very black each, and white town. It was each end of the spectrum, truly. Um, so you were like exotic for those folks. She was red all over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even, even I went back for this like <clears throat> school reunion thing. Um, and me and my friend Chanel were taking a picture and we were like, I guess we were always the only brown ones. It was just a bunch of white people around, <laughs> but because it's a different time, we never noticed it. A different Back time. Then, a different time. Then when I was in college, like oh, just okay. the the climate, like the social climate right. about like race and stuff. You don't really, I never really noticed like my friend groups, like lacking in diversity 
Right. You know what I right. mean? Yeah, yeah. And then when and now when I live in LA, so I look at my friend group and it looks like a fucking NBC sitcom. <laughs> it's yeah. like we have I mean ex- on a, a Wednesday wheelchair dude and everything. On a Wednesday night in Survivor, <laughs> the dude in the wheelchair is a That's black me. dude they with dreads and a like... wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got a white bl- a blind dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we got Angie, she's Filipino. We've got a black girl. We've got like a, a, a Middle Eastern dude, two a Middle Eastern dude an Indian dude, a Puerto Rican girl. Girl, a white girl, a ginger person. Assuming That's the third disability in the group. <laughs> Somebody with a foreign accent some, of some kind. A dude, someone that doesn't even speak the language. But the the diversity, and then sometimes, and then sometimes someone from my hometown will upload a wedding picture, and it'll be like white <laughs> and i'm like whoa holy shit i wouldn't have even noticed that if Almost i didn't live here it's weird though like i mean sometimes that's it off looks to me. crazy yeah. you ever see a wedding that's all one race that is weird like even in the guests yes that is weird Yeah, mormon weddings yeah but that doesn't <laughs> count <laughs> i do I, if there's ever a person like if a scorn woman or whatever would write a comment on a lineup be like no nice diversity or whatever. I always like to go, I'm handicapped just to see if they <laughs> see what they say. Yeah. They're scared to get canceled. I'm handicapped. You're, You're playing chess. They're playing checkers. I'm sorry that my handicap isn't uh, enough diversity for you. One time I talked about this guy that I was hooking up with that lost his finger mm-hmm. on my podcast. And then he said he was disabled. Yeah. And then he hit me up and he was like, I can't believe you would talk about my disability. My disability. This was after him joking around and lying about how he lost his finger and never really telling her how. Yeah. Which finger it was it? This one. The ring finger. Ooh, that's tough for fingering. No, oh, I thought you meant for why he lost it. It is something what to the ring finger a- being gone. That's yeah. weird. It's weird. It's He's a- always in the shocker. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. It is. Maybe he could be like, well, this is, com- Did it, was it to his advantage? Did it work out? I mean, it was... I don't know. Don't put me in my past sexual traumas. <laughs> sorry. Anyone have anyone he that clawed your pussy? <laughs> what? He clawed your pussy. Yeah, he, he gave me the lobster, as I yeah. call it. Yeah, no, I just um, thought maybe perhaps it was like one of those things where it's like turned out a lot better than guys with four fingers. Yeah, no, 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 no. It wasn't <laughs> much different, but you can't call a missing finger a disability. No, you can't. It's, it's, it's rude to people with disabilities. It. No, you could call a deformed hand a disability if you've had it from birth. Yes. You can't call a missing finger that you lost at some point <laughs> yeah. a no, disability. Sorry, sorry, you couldn't keep track of your finger. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I mean, you were fixing your lawnmower and uh, lost one somewhere in the blade, but... <laughs> also, don't lie. You know it was not a cool story by the fact that he wouldn't actually tell you what the story was. Oh, yeah. He probably got into a fight with his girlfriend and ch- got his finger ch- yeah. ring finger chopped. His probably married and was cheating and got his and she chopped it off? finger chopped off. <laughs> I like it's how possible. you go to what you would do to a finger. <laughs> it's not even like Shut nobody. up. Shut up. <laughs> Based on where the zoom is from, it was possible though. Yeah. Yeah. It was probably some sort of like he like I said, he was fixing the lawnmower and it was probably so dumb. Like he didn't turn it off before he tried to like unclog the blade yeah, or whatever. Stupid boy shit. Yeah, that yeah. Was, yeah. I mean, he was probably like I've my mom almost lost her finger because she was like lowering a ladder. You know how they go like down the thing and she got her finger chopped off. It was the night of the finale of Seinfeld. Mm. I don't remember how old I was, but she was, yeah, she was standing with her finger in the driveway and I'm like, am I going to miss Seinfeld now? (laughs) (laughs) And she was like, are you kidding me? (laughs) She like lost her mind. They sewed it back on. She was really one of my worst fears is not even being the person, but having to deal with the person whose finger just got chopped off and having to be the person who goes and puts it in a nice bag and stays calm while I drive you to the hospital. Keeps track of where it is. me out. Yeah, I wouldn't like that business at all. I, I can't handle that responsibility. I hate that. What if he had like a handicap sticker for his car, though, because he was missing a finger? He's like, yeah, I got my perks. He gets like a check from the government and shit. Listen, <laughs> that'd be harder than you complaining about me bringing it up on the podcast once. Because yeah. I, I, I talk about it in my act a little bit. Like, I some people are like, Josh, you are disabled. And then some people are like, you can't say that you're you're, you walk, you live alone, you walk around. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I have no. Well, it's a spectrum. Yeah, that's what I said. I was like, well, it's kind of a, but I don't know. I don't want to be considered handicapped, but then I just like 
It gives me an excuse to make jokes. About yeah, it's like you're technically handicapped. Yeah. And you're a comic, you wanna, so you're retarded. Right. No, that's so. true. <laughs> I am more mentally disabled than I am <laughs> physically. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> or mentally deficient or whatever the proper way to say retarded is these days. Do you remember at Skankfest when I had security and I kept saying that you were raping me <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was i'm like please let this guy be in on the joke he just beats the shit out of me at one point you were like can you stop i don't e can't even see if he's running towards me yeah i was like <laughs> one time he's going to not think this is a joke and he's going to end my life <laughs> yeah it was so funny <laughs> Sorry. No, I that don't That was care. when we first met, too. Sorry, but I'll do it again. <laughs> I'll do it again. That's like, uh, See you in Vegas, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never get... I'm not... I'm like... I go when girls make jokes like that about like... They're like, this guy's raping me. I'm like, someone's going to think you're for real. Yeah. <laughs> like that whole context thing we were talking about yeah, before. Yeah, it's like, too bad we can't make a rape joke anymore because they're <laughs> juicy. No pun intended. <laughs> they're what? Juicy. Juicy. Yeah, no, they are very juicy. They're juicy as fuck <laughs> i feel like it's a female's right to make rape jokes the way that black people could say the n-word you want to hear something sad well also you can prank me and be like he's a rapist like you can make jokes like that kind of rape joke for sure yeah and i and i have to be like i i guess you know like <laughs> what am i supposed to stand around there i was like not great at a comedy festival to say that <laughs> but you know, you know what's really sad is me and Alex were watching TikTok the other day, and I stopped at a video. Oh, it was last night, mm -hmm. and I stopped at a video, of, and I love. And I told her I love these videos. I stop at these all the time, and I'll watch them on YouTube. I love watching videos of people walk at cool in cool cities at night, just walking around, just because I can't. That's funny. <laughs> I just like love. I love the way that places look at night we and like with the lights walk on through of some city of a city. Yeah. And it was just like kind of dope. And it's like, oh, that's so cool. That's so interesting. I mean, I think about it all the time. My male, my male privilege is that I just get in Ubers and just fall asleep. And like if a, the driver tried to finger me or whatever, I'd be like five stars. Let's go. I do <laughs> right. <laughs> you just like, wake up and then female drivers jerking you off. It's <laughs> yeah, like it should like, be your dream. Sick. To yeah, get me yeah, tooed yeah. by a driver. Yeah, I, I get it. I, I pass out in Ubers like a fuck. I've, I've had like Uber drivers be like, we're here, boss, you know, and like have to wake me up. It's like if a woman fell asleep in an Uber, that's the most dangerous thing in the when world. I'm and in you can't Uber, even like take an Uber to your address. You have when, to go like, oh, I better put in the address three doors down. So I never do that. I'm just saying I've heard of pe I've heard women do that. I too. should I go, start doing that. It's crazy. But also, you get dropped off three doors down. Now you got to walk three doors down at two a.m. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a it's lose, all a lose. Yeah, yeah, it's a double edged sword. Yeah, Ubers are <laughs> scary. I when I'm in an Uber and it's like over thirty minutes, I'll I'll every three or four minutes I'll check the map on my phone to make sure we're still going the right way. Oh, that's interesting. You weighs it yourself. That doesn't. Yeah, sense. I put my Good. own address in the map just so I can make sure because I don't know where I'm going. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it'll be really scary. I'll zone out on my phone for like 10 minutes and I'll be like, <gasps> and I'll look around and I'm like, where are we? And it's like this panicked feeling of like, I should have been watching. Oh, I don't pay attention at all. Sometimes I'm like, well, we're taking a different route. And then I just look back at my phone <laughs> and again. Just go back to sleep. Yeah. And you're like, we're <laughs> yeah. in the woods. I, I can't tell you how many. I, I love. I'm like, oh, I'll get a nap in the Uber. Isn't that wild? Like, That's... And I just started thinking about it. Like, I said that to a girl one time and she was like, I'll get raped or something i was like wow yeah that's true good point one time i got into this uber after the comedy store this was years ago this is one of the scariest things i got into this uber and i get in the car and the guy is just off he's being weird like he's like not talking much and it's fine but he keeps looking at me in the rear view like just staring and I'm like, okay. And then as he's driving, I notice that when he hits the red lights or has to stop too fast, it feels like something like, it literally is like this sound, like. In the trunk? Oh, in the trunk. No. Like it's like something like going oh, no. like, like that. Like against, <laughs> I can feel it hitting my back. And then I, oh. and, and, and every time he has to hit the brakes and that sound smacks, I see him look at me and I look at him. <gasps> And Pretty so good. I stop looking when I feel it because I don't want him to know that I'm noticing it. Mm -hmm. I want him to think I'm just on my phone. 
And at one point I'm looking in my phone and it's happening so often. The traffic's so bad and the thing, the thump is so, and it is quite literally, I can't imagine it being anything else besides a body, the way it sounds. It sounds like a thick thing and then one loose thing that keeps going like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a well, yeah. thing with a flappy thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's smacking and it's going back and you, know, you can sort of tell it's like going like about this much. God. And the fourth or fifth time it happens, he looks up at me and goes, it kind of sounds like there's a body back there, oh huh? My no. God. I swear. No. And I look up and I went, huh? Oh, oh yeah, I don't know. I guess. <laughs> no, no. Fully thinking this the whole time. And then he says nothing else and drops me off at home. No. White guy? Yes. I am racist towards Uber drivers now that are white. If you have, if it's a white guy named Ralph, I'm like, uh-uh, cancel. Do you think he had a body? I don't, I don't know. I mean. Why would he say that? Probably to, it was probably a very autistic way to like We were probably you. both thinking the same thing, even though it wasn't He's a like, body. like, oh God, yeah. this woman's going to think it's a body in my trunk. And you're like, sounds like a body, huh? <laughs> Oh, fuck. I probably made that worse. You know, like one of those. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I hope so. I didn't yeah, like right? I didn't, Oh, and this murderer. is and this is another detail. <laughs> Before he made the the body thing about the second time I heard him, I noticed that he was trying not to hit the brakes anymore. Like he was driving. So the red lights, mm -hmm. he was like trying to hit him so he can roll through and make them green. <laughs> I swear. No, I, don't I like swear. It. I swear. <laughs> This guy must have just killed someone and had them in his trunk. Oh, my God. But then he just like was like, well, I better pick up a $18 <laughs> Uber fare hey, here and send this one home. It's a good alibi. I was driving all night. Yeah. And then also like to kind of it seems like you like that's the type of person who would be already kind of flaunting it in front of somebody. So why not just kind of say put it out there verbally, too? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. And maybe he liked oh, that he I liked was scared. That was, yeah. Yeah. Huh. It could Weird. have been a dark thing. I wonder how many serial killers we've met in our lives that we don't know. Or he's like, or I got to cover the cost of this. I got to drive all the way out to the bur the woods and throw this thing in there. It's mm -hmm. going to, I better get some Ubers in before on I the go way. out there. He was yeah. on the way to the woods. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, I was heading to the canyon anyway. <laughs> yeah. Like, <"All> right. <laughs> this is great. You know, like, why do you have that. a cement bag in here? I just can't. I mean, obviously very much minimal compared to those things the conversation that some of these people have just drains me like just takes oh. the energy from my body robs it from me i don't have that much of a problem with that because i shut that down quick you're yeah i try to i go uh-huh haha like i do things i'm not engaging no uh, have you ever had a person just talk at you on the way to the airport for this trip i had um this female like muslim um uh, Uber driver and she was driving a Tesla and she was going about 35 miles an hour mm. on the highway at 5 a.m. where nobody was on the highway. But she kept me entertained the entire time with a very personal story about how uh, she recently found the courage to leave her husband of 30 years. And she's this is like her new endeavor is driving mm. the Uber she was so cute. I was like, she was the worst driver ever, but I was like trying to be, I was like, you You're know what? You're so sweet. You I would have been what? like, shut it up, bitch, and yeah. take me to my plane. No, I'm just kidding. Your religious independence <laughs> or your independence despite your religion and your culture is remarkable. Yeah. I don't want to hear about it, lady. <laughs> Great. Great. It's 5 a.m. Yeah. I mean, it was wild how personal she got. I was like, I wonder if she does this with everybody or if I just gave her that open vibe. Like, is that going to be her thing where she's com she's trying to pawn off like uh, complaining about her husband to uh, clients? I've had a horrible Uber. I had an Uber driver pick me up 5 a.m. like that. Loud house music. Well, he probably thought it was like uh, you were going home situation, or does no, he... no, no, it's two of the airport bags no, but on the way to LAX. Trans he didn't transition his Uber from night mode to day <laughs> mode. Right, yet. right. He <laughs> forgot know? that it yeah. was the next day. He thought it was Miami. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he was yeah, like, it's exactly. seven a.m. Right, we're going to the club. Um, I was in Portland and I had an elderly man pick me up, and I had to go to the airport. I was a bit in a bit of a rush, and he was in the slow lane. And he's like.
Yeah, I drove a guy who was an old an ex-police officer, and he's just rambling about this story. I've given this guy no inkling that I want to speak to him. The old ones are the worst. And I'll I'll just stare out the window and pretend I'm not listening to them. But You're like, I, I'm blind and deaf. Yeah, I try to. And sometimes, like, now with the masks, it's cool because it covers up, like, most of your face or whatever. Sometimes I just, like, I'm like, I'll just put on, I go, no, yes. Like, I'll just say an accent. Like, that's not, that's nebulous. It's just... Just so they think that I don't speak English in that moment. Yeah. When I get in the cars, they'll go, Kimberly? And I go, yes. And they go, hi, how are you? I go, I'm great, thanks. I never say, how are you? And I know it's rude, but it is the opening to a conversation I don't want to have. It's like the the Ubers are already so expensive. The thought the, the thought of me not being able to relax while paying, du- paying double what I should to be taking a ride irks I me. I put on the quiet mode, you know, it's just like quiet I didn't know preferred. I had that. Well, it does, but I had a woman go, oh, it says quiet mode here, but I don't do that. And I no. go, what? No, if you're going to talk, pretend you didn't see the quiet mode thing. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, she's, yeah, right? I would have tipped her just for that. I like but that. She, oh. No, but I'm. But here's the thing. It would be wonderful if they were interesting or captivating, right? No. The people that want to talk to you, aren't. yours was kind of the way that that sounds, that sounds yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, kind of nice. It was unique at least, but yeah. the rest of them are just Uber drivers with nothing interesting about their lives. No, and they're rambling about this or that. And, and it, might, it makes you feel bad at sometimes too. No, it makes me feel <laughs> just, no. I just go like this person is taking from my energy right now. By yeah. Telling me about this, the encounter they had at a grocery store. Or I had an Uber driver pick me up in downtown last week and I would just left the a weed brunch where I got wildly high, <laughs> yeah, like I higher than I. Yeah, that's weed brunch from hell. Yeah, <laughs> um, I got wildly high. I felt like I was drugged, and it escaped. You canceled the podcast that day. We we're supposed to record. I escaped. Yeah. yeah, I escaped a trafficking. I felt like, yeah. <laughs> and I fucking and my Uber is out front, and I'm and she's calling me over and over again. I pick up the phone. This is she goes. Oh my god! Hey, hi. Where are you? Because this is insane. I've never driven in downtown before. Where are you? And I'm like, my mind's oh my moving god. so slow. And I go, I'm right outside the location. I called. And they go. She goes, I'm right by the Seven Eleven. And I remember the Seven Eleven was just right on the corner, mm-hmm. like. 20 seconds away and I go okay I'll be right there and she goes wait wait no no I'm driving up I'm driving up I'm actually in front of the frugal sea and I go just stay in front of the 7-Eleven I have no idea what you're saying or what that is and she's like no it's right in front of the 7-Eleven you know what I'll go to this next spot and I go don't move yeah and I had to like be mean a little and then I get in the car and this bitch we're driving (laughs) and she gets kind of quiet and she seems annoying she goes where are we going to Los Angeles (laughs) <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And We're she was all in Los Angeles. Yeah. Later. I was like, yeah. And she was like, oh. I mean, I guess it's fine. I just have to pick up my friend's daughter at three. And my friend called me today <laughs> and she asked me to pick up her daughter. She has no one to pick up her daughter because she's been drinking. So I said, I'll pick her up. You don't move. And it's just like kind of crazy because it's a little early for her to be drinking, not pick up her daughter. And, and I was like, oh, they love putting their shit on you. Why? I don't. No, that's what I'm saying. I Uber needs to like start being a little stricter about who they allow to drive. No for freaks them. allowed. Or just like have a training <laughs> New session. Uber ruled. How no about, freaks like, allowed. Orientation or something where it's like, if you feel the need to divulge inane thoughts that you have, don't do that. Like a little prof- like decorum. Like if you were working in a restaurant and you did that, they would pull you aside and they would be like. Stop telling the customers. Yeah, if the waiter showed you pictures of their granddaughter, like, yeah. it's too yeah. much. Stop yeah. volunteering information. Please, nobody needs to know that you and your boyfriend broke up. Oh, my God. I, I have this, like, at my apartment all the time where, like, the Uber will just park, like, five houses down, and I'm standing in the middle of the road, like, yo, hey, and they'll just be looking at me, and then I'll be like, oh, I guess I'm walking up to the Uber, which I don't mind, but it's like, you see me here. You're in a car, You're in a car. How about you pull up? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Same with like Uber Eats. I'm like, hey, whatever. You know, and they're like all the way at the corner. I'm like, I guess I'm going. I could have just walked to the restaurant at this point, probably. And Uber's gotten worse. When Uber first came out, it was cheap. 
you could fucking you could fucking share rides. You could split rides. You could do all this cool shit. I think you can still do that. No, you don't. There's no pool anymore. Not well. There's no. Thank God for that. That was yeah. Like, that was a. You might as well take a city bus. I mean, mare. <laughs> was, honestly, pool. They started really taking advantage of you with that one. Yeah, that's a I, circus. And I that's took something that, that they ago. started and made it really cool. Like at first, it was like you and one other person going towards the same destination at the same time, splitting the ride 50-50, which is fine by me. I love to support the earth and if we can all save a few bucks I'll sit in a car with you. Right. But then these fuckers, at one point we're picking up three, four, filling up the car. It looked like a clown car when we got out of that bitch. I don't want to be rubbing elbows with a stranger. No. I had a guy bring in a speaker. There should be one seat in between us. Pick up one other person and Mm -hmm. take us both to a close destination. I have headphones in. They have headphones in. If I'll, you absolutely need a third, put him in the front. Put him in the front. Yeah. There's there was once where there was a fourth. I had the I had I had all three. You had the a only full time co- I full ever pool. a full and, pool. And I was the first one to get picked up and the last one to get dropped off. It's always that way. It's like, always that bus. way, and it's always when you're late for your flight. And a guy had a Bluetooth speaker. <gasps> and no. he was uh it was uh no, said uh, post fucked. Malone where it's like I've been booking old and bopping bit and he's like singing it and <laughs> shit. And we're like, like, rock star. Yeah, yeah. He's like singing it out the window as if no one else is in the car. It was wild. And those people you can't say anything to because they truly you can tell they have nothing to lose. Well this guy was legit like jacked and like had tattoos yeah and shit, if you have so a bluetooth like, speaker out loud you're working out in the sun a lot you know, yeah yeah i hate to say this but i also kind of believe that an uber driver should not be blasting their own music when you get in the car nope i don't even want to hear their music at all i want you to nope. maybe give me the option to play my own music it is well nice that's what i was ask, gonna say they took never... they took that away too they used to always have an aux cord and it used to always be like put on your own music some still. that's not even an option anymore well some still do but like I, I've gotten into a couple Ubers where they go, any music preference? I go, I don't even want to interact with you. <laughs> I truly don't want to talk to I, my, yeah. the way open the conversation with an option for give me. Give me a guy with a name that I can't pronounce, <laughs> who's not doesn't even speak English. The, the, oh, pr- no, oh. the ethnic music though. I don't care if they I they can care. play like no. Lamba Dumba 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 don't like care. whatever they want. I, I, put care. Head, I put my headphones in. I exactly. Can't. I can't I put with my he- pop music. I can't with ethnic music. I cannot with any music that I didn't pick in a car ride that I I am paying for. But don't you, do you yeah. not wear your headphones? Not really. And even when I do, it's like kind of difficult to drown out some, some True. heavy beat behind me. Sometimes I'm like, I, I get, when I, if it's like a Middle Eastern guy, I get kind of excited. Cause then you have like that fucking like techno where it's like, oh, and I'm hey, like, sometimes this, those hit. I, yeah. Something, hey, exactly. So sometimes, sometimes I'm those high enough and I'm just like, what's this hit. shit? I'm sound hounding it all of a sudden, you know? Dude, like, sometimes those songs, every once in a while, you'll get one where you go like, oh, yeah, I want to be at this like, party. Yeah. It sounds like Desert Rose by Sting or whatever. <laughs> and you're like, hey, no, no. you're fucking yeah. like, damn, all right, let's go. Yes. No, that's not bad. I don't, the music thing though, when they ask you, I go, whatever makes you drive me there quicker is what I say to them or something Your like that. Your passive aggressive answer. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yep. I go, whatever gets us there. We're the same person. Cause I go, I'm like, I don't, I don't mind. Same or you know go. what I do sometimes? I'll just text Sarah and say, Hey, can you call me? And then if they're playing bad music, I'll go, I'm sorry, I have to take this call <laughs> and make them turn down the music, then cut off this call with Sarah. That's funny. Shortly and hope that they don't turn it back oh, on. No, right. like, it's probably 50 50. It's good. I had a guy, oh my God, when I was going to do Sarah's podcast, it like drained me on my way there. Ugh. He goes, he you mind jerked if I, him off. He goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, you mind if I play talk radio? Which I, I love talk radio. So I was kind of like, oh, this is cool. I'm down for that. So I'm just sitting, I'm thinking, oh, cool, I'll listen to this. And uh, I didn't even actually put my headphones in. But then he starts giving me his commentary on their thoughts. So it'll be like, boy, do I miss Trump, you know, stuff like that. And um, you're like, I'm doing the, and it's like the hackiest converse. It's like, what am I reading fucking uh, Twitter right now? Like, I'm listening to the most hacky fucking takes I've ever heard from this guy. This is what I hate as a woman. Getting in an Uber at night. And it's a dude that's driving or a girl that's driving and her boyfriend in the passenger seat. They're not allowed to do that. That's, they you do should that. report that. I know. I've that's, never seen that. I'm like, I don't want anything to do with setup. this. Yeah, that's like, uh, yeah. that's a lift thing. I feel like. <laughs> What's the, like, 
<laughs> that's like a spirit of uh, Uber like, or whatever, yeah. whatever it's that the other one is. Of yeah. Ubers. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> have you ever seen it at LAX? They have that sign. They're like, and then this one, you're like, who's using this shit? Yeah. Nobody's fucking using that. Is the dump. guy with the whiteboard? No, there's the a airport? fucking, um, like when you go to the Uber section, it's like Uber, Lyft, and then it has like another one that I've never heard. It must be European or Via something. or some shit. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. you're like, <laughs> people are you, that must be like the frontier airlines of of uber technically oh man <laughs> well fucking i think we fucking did, we did it we this one of our longer pods we did an oh, hour five. Yeah. hell yeah yeah hell we did great yeah. i love when we reach an hour dude yeah. um potter you were so fun we didn't want to stop oh thank you no I'm i love talking here. shit about uh uber drivers oh yeah i could do it all day crazy fans <laughs> i don't drive so i have to uber everywhere so it's so like, you have a lot of uber experience got a lot of uber experience um where can people find you uh i'm on instagram i'm uh, at josh underscore potter twitter's at j underscore potter and the josh potter show comes out every tuesday everywhere you know youtube itunes the whole thing if you haven't checked out the josh potter show make sure you go do that you guys he's fucking hilarious he has a huge following he's very humble People love his podcast. It's really incredible. It's Check it out. Support it. He's one of our good friends. Um, Alex, what about you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at I am Alex Scar. Also, check out uh, Stick and Portly. Watch Rick and Morty every Monday right after Legion of Skanks, only on gasdigitalnetwork.com slash live. Uh, and if you head to gasdigitalnetwork.com, you could use promo code TOPICS, T-O-P-I-X, for a seven-day free trial with access to every episode of our show. Mm -hmm. And every other show on the network on demand, bonus content, live chats, uh, and more of like everything. You got everything. You got thousands of hours of content, actually. Um, also, head to iTunes and YouTube for free episodes of our show every Monday. Um, subscribe, leave a review, help us out. Head to podcastmerch.com mm -hmm. where you could uh, catch t-shirts, hoodies, all sorts of broad topics, shit, and... As always, thank you for listening. Uh, Kim? Hell yeah. You guys can follow me on Twitter at Kimberly Congdon, on Instagram at Kim Congdon. Check me out on twitch.tv slash queenkong1. I will be doing a giveaway for a pair of Skankfest tickets. Very, very excited. So make sure you tune in. Should have follow. If you have Amazon Prime, sub to the stream. Um, and we will be doing that in the next few weeks. I'm very excited. Uh, also, as far as shows go, I um, will be... <laughs> Shit. Um, in Oxnard at LMU on May 3rd. I will be in Huntington Beach May 13th. Um, in May 27th and 28th, I will be in Houston, Texas at The Riot. Um, please come check that out, The Riot Comedy Show. Um, and if you check my my Instagram at Kim Congdon, I have the link for that show. So come check out, come support. It's my first time in Houston headlining, so I really want to pack out that room. Um, so if you know anybody, send them on over. Um, and thank you so for supporting the show. And um, We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.